Hello, and welcome to the Believer's Transformation Series Level 1. This is lesson number three. This is brought to you in part by the Pendleton Lighthouse Church. Now, before we get going, I uh, put this little picture of this guy who is supposed to be wise. Because I found this verse in the Bible this last week. It says, let no man deceive himself. You can deceive yourself. God can send you a delusion, but you can actually deceive yourself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may become wise. And by putting together this series, I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to be wise and I know everything because I know. <laughs> I, there's so many things I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a fool. I really am. I'm just trying to follow after the Lord. He told me to put together these seven lessons. And this is the next verse. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. My master's degree is foolishness. And it is written, he takes, taketh the wise in their own craftiness. That's how he's going to get them, by them acting wise. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise. They are vain. Vain is empty. Uh, head knowledge is not going to save you. And you can be great at math and great at languages and all kinds of things, but it's really, it's got to be the wisdom of God. And when he gave me this series, I'm going to say this again, he told me specifically there was three groups of people that he was reaching with this. New believers, if you haven't ever been at church, this is going to be great. If you have never had a relationship, it's going to help you. And returning believers. We live in a time where people are coming back to God by the droves. Revival is now. If you've been gone and you're coming back, this series is for you. You need a transformation. And then there's that group. This God spoke this to me. They go to church all the time. They, they, but they need transformed too. I can't transform you. My wisdom is nothing. It has to be from the wisdom of God. That transformation has to totally take place within him. And I just, I just want to encourage you to let his wisdom guide you, not through just lesson number three, but for the rest of the lessons and for the rest of your life, because that's where it's really at. So lesson number one is relationship, not religion. If you have any, if you're just living by a, a list of rules, you're going because your grandma went or whatever, you need a transformation because if you have anything other than a relationship with God, I'm begging you to stop. I'm begging you to stop and have a relationship. Do it because you love him. That's why you have to serve the Lord, not because of something other. Anything else is just sinking sand. Lesson number two was, um, old things are passed away. You're a new creature in Christ. And we tried really hard to take a look at your heart. The heart inside might love God, but there's all that crusty stuff that you got to start taking a look at, a close look at and say, ah, this is not good. I got to get away from that. I got to get away from the old, the old man. The old man's got to die. And that sort of brought us to this thought, the two lessons together. Jesus is talking. He said, if you love me, and that's what we talked about, we, we love God. That's a relationship. And then we keep his commandments because we love him. And keeping those commandments are going to keep our heart new and that old man is going to pass away. So that's just a summary of the first couple lessons. So I have to uh, think about some other things. We've been talking a lot about your heart, um, but I have this question for you.
Where is all this leading? What is all this bringing us to? Is it like that cliche, uh, follow your heart, just do whatever you feel is right. And that's the way, if, if you feel it's right, then God's, well, there's nothing farther from the truth. You can't follow your heart. You need to love God completely with all of your heart, but you can't follow your heart. And I'm going to prove this to you in the word of God. This is straight from the book. The heart is deceitful above all things. There's nothing more deceitful than your heart, my heart. And it's desperately wicked. And the question is, who can know it? No one can. You can't know your heart. If you're following your heart and you're doing what feels right, it's, it's wicked. It's deceitful. It's going to take you somewhere you don't want to go. It's not what you need to do. Um, the next verse is just as important as this one. Now keep this one in mind. This is 17.9. Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Okay. He knows your heart. He knows that is desperately wicked. <laughs> he knows. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Now, this is a picture of a bridle on a horse. Now, until I did this lesson, this is how foolish I am. I, I'm a city girl. I didn't know the difference between the bridle and these are the reins. The reins is what makes the horse turn want, or stop. That's what controls the horse, not that piece on his head. For some reason, I thought that piece on his head was what it was. No, and they actually, I read, and I'm foolish. That's why I had to read a bunch of stuff about this. The sides of their mouths can get so calloused that you can pull the reins and they can't feel it. And when I read that, I got scared. I can let my heart, I can let my heart get so calloused that he pulls on my heart. He tries my reins and I can't feel it. It says, I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So he knows your ways and he's going to try you. And this, these two verses together are two of the most scariest verses at all in the Bible. Or There's several that scare me that I go, oh, <laughs> this is one of them. I don't, and I've saw it in a whole new light because I didn't realize that horses could get, their faces could get uh, calloused and they can't feel the reins. I want God to just be able to barely tug on my heart and say, go this way and I do it. Or go that way or stop. Don't just, he doesn't have to pull back way hard. No, I want him to be able just to talk to me. And, and I say, yes. So I have another question, a couple questions for you. Who's leading you? Who, who's controlling you? Is it you on you on your life? Are you controlling you? Is the devil controlling you? Is God controlling you? And then here's another really good question you need to be thinking about during this lesson is what direction am I going? What direction? You know, I told my personal testimony in, in number two, you know, I was drinking on the weekend. The next day I went to church. I felt so bad. Was was I lost? Was I a filthy sinner? Well, God was was giving me some directions. You don't want to be doing this. How about that time in the movie theater? You don't want to be here. You know, God was, I, I, I was doing the wrong, wrong things, but I was still on the right direction because I was listening to God and changing those old ways were passing away. So that's what I'm asking you. When you're doing those things, is God talking to you? 
or is the or is your mouth so calloused where the rains can't move you? Because God's direction is always the right path. Now, we see people and we think, oh, they're they're they'll never get right. Hey, as long as they're on God's direction, they're going towards the cross. I was telling my friend, I was so far from the cross when I repented. I repented, I turned from those evil ways. I did turn and I was walking, but I was so far. It just took me a long time to get there. And that's the way it is with a lot of folks. So take heart. (laughs) Back to that heart idea. Take heart. If you're on God's direction, you're in the right path. And truthfully, if you're on the right path, you've repented. Told God you're sorry. You're doing the right things. The answers are in the book. Every answer you need is in the Bible. Listen to this verse, and we're going to read a couple verses in a row. But this first one is, maybe you've heard it. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, Of course, Everyone knows from their bed to the bathroom in the night. Um, my husband's had been having um, some cancer treatments and he has to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And uh, somehow he knows the path. He knows how to get from his side of the bed to the bathroom. It's not that far. <laughs> but there was no light on. And he hit his big toe on something um, because there was no light to the path and of course I fixed that problem I put a night light in the bathroom but <laughs> but it just showed me it all happened when I was preparing this lesson it showed me it doesn't matter even if you know the path again I'm talking to that person who's been in church for 50 years and been sitting on the seat and they know the path if they don't have the light on the path they're still gonna stub their toe the word, his word is a light unto your path. So it's going to tell you how to live your life. Every part, any question you have about your life, it's in the Bible. You can find it. it marriage and family. <laughs> You're having those kind of problems. It's in the book. You're having problems with money and the economic times we live in. It's very common. The Bible talks so much about money. It's incredible. And you have emotional problems, you get angry, you're sad, you're fearful, whatever those are, you know what? The Bible talks about that. It has all of those things in it. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path. You may know which way to go. You're on the right road, but unless you have that light, you're going to stub your toe or maybe even trip and fall. And this one, this verse, very next verse, or in the same book, a few verses now, I mean, same chapter, Psalms 119. Doesn't matter if you're young or old. The question says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? But really, it's not just for the young, it's for the old too, because I need cleansing. If I only took a bath when I was a kid, (laughs) it'd be a mess. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Well, that's the question. Here's the answer. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Really listening what the word has to say to you. Every day. Applying the word of God to your life. In every situation. Next verse. 119.10 says. With my whole heart have I sought thee. See that's how you have to live for God. It's back to lesson number one. You have to do this thing all the way with your whole heart. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. If you are seeking diligently God with all your heart, he's going to help you stay on the path. 
Is he going to say, don't do that? And don't go there or come over here? Or, oh, I want you this way. Of course he will. You're not going to wander from his commandments. Again, remember that verse? It said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's not hard when you're, when you're doing it with your whole heart. And this verse says, this is the very next one. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Very common verse. A lot of people know this, this verse. But are you really hiding his word in your heart? If you're not reading his word, then it's really hard to hide it. If it's got dust on it, if you're not blowing it off every day and and crack in the book, at least some, then you need to, because his word you need to hide in his heart. I teach this Bible study to a group of people besides online, and I told them, I keep a little King James promise book in the bathroom. I, sometimes you have a few minutes in the bathroom, okay? Let's just be honest, and, and uh, I can just read, and it's topical. If you're sad, you read all these, it has like six verses. Or if you're lonely, different topics. And it just has what the word of God, I'm hiding that word in my heart. A lot of times those word, those verses are very familiar to me, but it doesn't matter. I'm hiding it in my heart. Now, it's up to you to figure out ways that's going to work for you to get the word of God in your heart. But you can do it. Now, this isn't from the Bible, but it's pretty good truth. God does not guide those who want to run their own life. Now, back to my own personal testimony, because that's what I have to draw from, okay? If I was sitting there, um, let's say, in that movie, God said, oh, no, I'm feeling that bad, and I didn't act upon it. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm going on the stage. This guy's paid good money for me to take me. I like him. You know, and I just want to run my own life. Do you think God's going to keep talking to me? Do you think that feeling would have persisted? No, it wouldn't. Every time I said bad things out of my mouth, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have let God say, come on, Shannon, don't say that. Come on, don't go there. Then he wouldn't have kept leading me. So if you want to run your own life, he'll let you go. Um, there's, there is verses in Romans that says that God sent them a delusion because they didn't have the love for the truth in their heart. God let them go because they wanted to run their own life. It's called iniquity. And we don't want that. No one does. And... What would this lesson be? This is the main thrust of this lesson is for you to see exactly how important the word of God is. It was the very first story and the reason for the very first mistake, the fall of all mankind came because Eve did not know the word of God. Now, there's lots of things we could have said from this story, and I'm sure most of you know this story. But I'm just going to point out just one little part of it. This is Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle, sneaky, than any other beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, so the devil is always going to attack. His first thing out of his mouth was attacking the word of God. Okay, first thing he said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. <laughs> first thing he did. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the of the fruit of the trees and of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. He did say that. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She added that she didn't know exactly what the word of God said. 
And from that moment on, the serpent knew she really didn't know. It's, it's worth the read to go read the whole chapter. He is attacking the word of God and what God had said to Adam to say, to say to his wife. Now, in my mind's eye, she probably touched it and realized she didn't drop dead because she didn't know the word of God. So when she touched it, nothing happened to her. Then she ate. So it's always been from the very beginning. It's never changed. The devil is going to attack the word of God. That is why it's so important, not just to know it, but to know it very in depth, very detailed, every little part of it. You need to know. This is a, per, a part that everyone needs to know. A very familiar verse, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you start reading the Bible, and I hope that you are reading the Bible every day now, um, you need to realize, and I always tell people to start, and even if you've read it before, start again, and you haven't been reading, start with the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are called the Gospels, and they are the life and times and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you have the book of Acts. It is where the church began. You want to know how the church started, what the first church did? You have to read the book of Acts. And then the letter of Paul to the churches are all those Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, as their names of cities. And Paul is, most, we think Paul was writing those. And then we have Paul wrote to individuals, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. And then we have the general epistles or the general letters uh, from different people that we know that wasn't Paul. And then, we, of course, we have uh, Revelations, which is a lot of people miss this. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a very important book, too, in itself. But you're not going to go to the book of Revelations if you want to find out what you got to do to be saved. You're actually not going to even go to one of the letters of the churches. That Those were written to people that already were saved. They already had been born again of the water and the spirit. If you want to find out how to be saved, you have to read the book of Acts. And if you read the book of Acts, it's exciting. Time after time after time, it's the same thing. The same elements happen. The same thing. It's beautiful. Oh, and if you want to know what Jesus is really like, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John back to back. I just did it twice in a row and uh, it is good. You really see Jesus. You're seeing Jesus through different people's eyes, but you can really see the man, Christ Jesus. And if you're in love with him, you want to know how he acted. Um, again, this is maybe this is something you've heard a million times, or maybe it's brand new to you. It doesn't matter, but it's something we always have to be reminded of that we have to rightly divide the word of truth so we can find the right answers to the right. You got a church problem, you're going to find it in those letters to the, that Paul wrote to the churches. All church problems, and there are church problems. Come on, let's be real. There's church problems. They're always addressed in the book, those books. Oh, and different books to Timothy too. And, you know, he was dealing with, Timothy was a preacher, so he was trying to talk to him about his church. So it's all in there. Read it, study it, be approved of God. <sighs> this says, reduce your stress level by taking time to unplug from the world. Open your Bible and listen to what God has to tell you. So I'm asking you in this third lesson, turn off Facebook, turn it off. Open your Bible, Snapchat, all those other ones. Stop. Stop hearing the news. Unplug for a little while. Unplug into God. Listen. Sometimes I just read and I have a really hard time. I'm very hyper, but I make myself be quiet. And what is this trying to say to me? What is this telling me? Unplug. Listen to God. It it will change, it will reduce your stress level. You'll be a different person from just reading the word of God daily, maybe several times a day. That 
that several times a day. Um, the word of God is referred to as food. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of my lips. I have esteemed your words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Most of us do not eat once a day or once a week when you go to church on Sunday. No, we eat several times a day. It's it's good to put Bibles in different places and set up several different times that you're eating it because your mind can't absorb it all. Read a little bit here. Read a little bit there. Uh, we live in America. You can have several different Bibles. I, this is for the break room. This is in my office. This one's in the bathroom. This one's by my chair for my main reading of the day. Wherever it is, you have to decide that. But you have to eat it like food. It's what's giving you strength. If you have been living for God for a long time and you feel weak, it's probably because you're not eating enough of the word. If you left, you came, you were in love, and then something happened and you left, I bet you if you look back, you weren't reading the word. Because when you were reading the word regularly, that wasn't happening. Or maybe you never started out as a baby understanding the important that it's the sincere milk of the word and you didn't get it that you needed it. So whatever it is, you got to eat the word. This picture has been in all three lessons and every time God has told me. And he told me very specifically for this lesson that it's like Jesus Christ is standing right in front of you. That's what the Bible is. That's, you have a problem, you're lonely, you need God. The word of God is him. And he's standing there. He's standing there. He's not mad. He's not got his fist draw back to slug you. He's not going to push you down. He's not going to hurt you. No, he's standing there with his nailed scarred hands waiting for you to come to him. He can't make you open the book. He can't make you read it. But if you do, he's right there. And he wants you to love his word. He wants you to love. Sounds funny. There's been times I've kissed the Bible. It's, it's like, oh, that is so beautiful. He wants you to love his word. Not just think, regard it as some book, but really love the word of God. If you're loving it and you're loving him, he's going to keep you on the right path. So to sum up this whole lesson, God's word and his love should cause a transformation in your life. His word and his love should cause a transformation in your life. If it's not, hear this again. If it's not, it's time to pray. If it's not, it's time to read the word. If it's not, it's time to really look at your heart and let that transformation take place. Let's pray before we close today. Oh, thank you, Jesus, so much for letting us have this time. God, I just pray for this person that's been watching this. God, that you just touch their heart, that they love you not because of a set of rules, but they love you and they want to serve you. God, I pray that their hearts transformed and I pray that from this day forward, they'll start reading their word of God. Even if it's a verse or two here and there, they'll put it on their phone app. They'll make some changes in their life. They'll put it around. They'll make a place for them to actually talk with you and eat with you. Eat your lovely word. God, I thank you for this journey and this path and this transformation that you're taking us on. God, I'm so thankful. I'm not wise. I'm really a fool. And I know it's all in you. You have all the words of wisdom. You have all the words of life. It comes straight from you. God, forgive me for all the years I did not study my Bible like I should. Forgive me, Lord God. Help me to be transformed. Help me to understand your word. And understand how important it is for salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Until 
the next lesson. I pray that God blesses you. I love you. I do. And he loves you too.